Mosi was a small boy with big dreams. He lived in the quiet village of Nyama, nestled near the great baobab trees. Everyone in Nyama knew about the powerful witch doctor, Jabari, who could heal the sick, speak to spirits, and even make rain fall when the land was dry. Mosi had always admired Jabari and wanted to be just like him one day. He would watch from a distance as Jabari mixed herbs, chanted strange words, and danced under the moonlight. Mosi dreamed of being Jabari's apprentice, of learning the secrets of magic, and of helping his village. One morning, while Mosi was fetching water from the river, he heard a voice. It was Jabari, standing tall with his long, flowing robes and a staff decorated with feathers and beads. Mosi, Jabari said in his deep, calm voice, I have seen your spirit. You are brave, curious, and have the heart of a healer. Would you like to be my apprentice? Mosi's eyes widened with joy. Yes, yes. I want to learn everything. Jabari smiled but his eyes were serious. It is not easy. You must work hard, listen well, and never question my commands. Do you understand? Mosi nodded eagerly. He didn't care how hard it would be. He was ready to learn the magic of the witch doctor. And so, from that day on, Mosi followed Jabari everywhere. He learned to gather herbs, make potions, and sing the songs that called the spirits. Jabari would take him to the forest, showing him secret paths and hidden places. Mosi was amazed by everything, especially the way Jabari could talk to animals and make the wind listen to his words. But soon, Mosi noticed something strange. Jabari often went to the old, forbidden cave near the river. No one in the village was allowed to go there because it was said to be the home of angry spirits. Yet, Jabari would go there often, and each time he returned, he would look tired and worried. One night, Mosi decided to follow Jabari to the cave. He hid behind the trees, making sure not to make a sound. As Jabari entered the cave, Mosi could hear whispers, soft at first but then louder, like voices arguing. Mosi's heart pounded. He wanted to run, but his curiosity held him still. After what seemed like forever, Jabari came out, looking more troubled than ever. Mosi ran back to the village and lay in his bed, unable to sleep. What was Jabari doing in the cave? Who was he talking to? The next day, Mosi tried to ask Jabari about the cave, but Jabari's face darkened. Some things are not for you to know, Jabari said sharply. Do not speak of the cave again. Mosi nodded, but he couldn't stop thinking about it. He began to notice other strange things. Sometimes, Jabari's potions would make people sicker instead of better. One time, a farmer's crops withered after Jabari had blessed them. The villagers began to whisper, but no one dared question the witch doctor. After all, he was the one who protected them from evil spirits. One day, while Mosi was mixing herbs, an old woman named Mama Kina came to Jabari's hut. She was crying, holding her grandson who was very ill. Jabari mixed the potion and handed it to Mama Kina, but as soon as the boy drank it, he started to convulse. Mosi watched in horror, but Jabari just stood there, unmoved. What did you give him? Mosi whispered, his voice trembling. Jabari turned to him with cold eyes. Do not question me, Mosi. This is the way of the spirits. Mosi felt a chill run down his spine. Something was very wrong. That night, Mosi sneaked into Jabari's hut. He searched through the jars of herbs, the bottles of potions, looking for answers. In the corner, Hidden under a cloth, he found a small, black jar. As soon as Mosi touched it, a strange feeling washed over him. He opened the jar and saw a thick, dark substance that smelled of rot and decay. This was not a healing potion. This was something dark, something evil. Mosi realized then that Jabari was not just talking to spirits in the cave. 
he was making deals with them. Dangerous deals. Mosi knew he had to do something, but he was just a boy. How could he fight a powerful witch doctor? The next day, Mosi confronted Jabari. I know what you've been doing, Mosi said, trying to keep his voice steady. You've been using dark magic. Jabari's face twisted with anger. You are just a child, he sneered. You know nothing of what it takes to protect this village. But Mosi stood his ground. You are hurting people. You promise to help them, not harm them. Jabari raised his staff, and Mosi felt a sharp pain in his chest. He fell to the ground, gasping for breath. You are my apprentice, Jabari said coldly. You will obey me, or you will suffer. Mosi lay there, struggling to breathe, but in his heart, he knew he could not give up. He had to find a way to stop Jabari before more people got hurt. Mosi knew it would be dangerous, but he also knew he had no choice. He had to be brave, like the heroes in the old stories. And so, with a heavy heart and a burning resolve, Mosi began to plan his next move. Mosi spent the next few days watching Jabari closely, pretending to be the obedient apprentice. But inside, he was gathering information, looking for weaknesses. He noticed that Jabari always carried a small pouch around his neck, which he never let anyone touch. Mosi suspected it held something important, maybe even the source of Jabari's dark power. One evening, while Jabari was away in the cave, Mosi sneaked into the witch doctor's hut again. This time, he went straight for the pouch. He opened it and found a strange black stone. It was cold and pulsed with a dark energy. Mosi knew this was no ordinary stone, it was filled with the power of the spirits Jabari had been consorting with. Mosi wrapped the stone in a cloth and hid it under his bed. He knew he couldn't keep it for long, Jabari would surely notice it missing. But for now, Mosi felt a small sense of victory. He had taken something from Jabari, something powerful. The next morning, Jabari stormed into Mosi's hut, his eyes blazing with fury. Where is it? he demanded. Where is my stone? Mosi tried to play dumb. I don't know what you're talking about. Jabari grabbed Mosi by the arm, his grip like iron. Do not lie to me, boy. I can smell the stone's power on you. Mosi pulled away, his heart pounding. I won't let you keep hurting people, he said, trying to sound brave. Jabari's laugh was cold and cruel. You think you can stop me? You are nothing, Mosi. Just a foolish child playing with things beyond your understanding. But Mosi didn't back down. Maybe I am just a child, he said, but I will not let you use your magic to harm the village. Jabari's face twisted with anger. He raised his staff, and a dark cloud began to form above his head. Mosi felt a chill run through him, but he stood his ground. He knew he had to be strong, not just for himself, but for the whole village. Just as Jabari was about to strike, there was a loud noise, like the beating of many drums. The villagers had gathered outside, drawn by the commotion. They watched in shock as Mosi stood up to Jabari, their powerful witch doctor. Mosi took a deep breath and spoke loudly so everyone could hear. Jabari has been using dark magic. He's been hurting people, not helping them. The villagers gasped. They looked at Jabari, then at Mosi. They didn't want to believe it, but they had seen the strange things happening in the village. Jabari's spells had gone wrong too many times. Jabari snarled, you have no proof. You are just a child spreading lies. Mosi held up the black stone. This is your proof, he said. This stone is filled with dark magic. Jabari has been using it to make deals with evil spirits. The crowd murmured, fear and uncertainty filling their eyes. Jabari lunged at Mosi, but the villagers stepped forward, blocking his path. They had seen enough. 
they were no longer willing to blindly follow the witch doctor who had brought so much fear into their lives. Leave, Jabari, one of the elders said firmly. We do not need your magic if it comes with such a price. Jabari glared at Mosi, then at the villagers. He knew he had lost his hold over them. With a bitter snarl, he turned and fled into the forest, disappearing into the shadows. Mosi stood there, trembling but relieved. He had done it. He had stood up to Jabari and protected his village. The elders came to him, patting him on the back and thanking him. Mosi knew he had a lot to learn, but for the first time, he felt like a real hero. Mosi watched as Jabari disappeared into the forest, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and relief. The villagers, who had once feared the witch doctor's power, now looked to Mosi as their new hope. But Mosi knew that Jabari would not give up easily, the dark spirits he had allied with were still out there, and their influence could return at any time. The next day, Mosi gathered the elders of the village. Jabari may be gone, but the dark magic he used still lingers, Mosi warned. We must cleanse our village of his evil and protect ourselves from the spirits he called. With the elders' blessing, Mosi began to perform rituals he had learned from Jabari, but this time, he focused on healing and protection. He used the black stone to absorb the lingering dark energy, carefully controlling its power so it would not harm anyone else. As Mosi led the villagers in chants and dances under the moonlight, the atmosphere changed. The heavy, oppressive feeling that had hung over the village began to lift. The crops started to grow healthier, and the sick began to recover. The villagers' faith in Mosi grew stronger, and they celebrated his bravery and wisdom. However, Mosi knew the final challenge lay ahead. One night, as he was meditating under the great baobab tree, the spirits of the forest appeared before him. They were not angry, instead, they seemed curious and watchful. Mosi spoke to them, pleading for peace and asking for their blessing to protect the village. The spirits listened, and after a tense silence, they granted Mosi their favor, promising to watch over Naima as long as Mosi remained true to his path. With the spirits on his side, Mosi returned to the village, now a hero not just for his courage but for his kindness and wisdom. The villagers celebrated, and Mosi was officially named the new healer and protector of Nayama. He continued to learn and grow, always remembering the lessons he had learned from Jabari's mistakes. Though he was just a boy, Mosi had proven that true power came from the heart, not from fear or dark magic. As the village thrived, Mosi knew that challenges would always come, but with the support of his people and the guidance of the spirits, he felt ready to face whatever lay ahead. The story of Mosi, the brave apprentice who stood up to dark magic, became a legend that was told around the fires of Nyama for generations, reminding everyone that even the smallest among them could change the course of destiny with courage and heart.